Welcome to episode 7 of Sailing Loon. This is your guide to crossing the Gulf Stream from West Palm Beach, Florida to West End, Bahamas. In this episode, we're going to cover everything from where to anchor in West Palm, how to cross the Gulf Stream, including weather planning and heading strategies, how to enter the cut into Old Bahama Bay Marina for either immigration or slips, and everything you need to know to clear immigration in the Bahamas. I'm going to give you a quick rundown on where to anchor in Lake Worth while staging your Bahamas crossing. This is the West Palm Beach or Lake Worth Inlet and the first anchorage in the Turning Basin. As you move south, you come to Lake Worth 1, which is usually packed full of boats, but don't worry, there's plenty more room. To get to Lake Worth 2 and 3, I would recommend taking the ICW south. So here is Lake Worth 2, which is usually quiet enough to find a space to anchor. This pin that I've dropped is exactly where I anchored. It had great holding and great depth for a 6 foot for draft. Lastly, if you continue south down the ICW, you come to Lake Worth 3, which you will definitely be able to find a spot in. So let's discuss a little bit about the weather and what we were looking for to cross from West Palm to West End, Bahamas. I use Windy to look at weather. I think it's a great app, and so far it's been pretty accurate. We are leaving from West Palm Beach and we are crossing over to West End, right here. The Gulf Stream is a current that moves north at anywhere from one to I think around six knots, so it can move very quickly. It's basically a river in the ocean moving north. What you wanna look for when you're crossing the Gulf Stream is one, two, three days even of calm weather and wind that's not coming down from the north. Because wind against current creates waves and there can be some very nasty waves throughout the Gulf Stream. So this is the day before we're leaving. We have a light east wind, which hopefully will make for some smooth crossing conditions. Moving on to Friday at 4 a.m. where we plan to depart. We have a light southeast wind for the beginning. So we'll be motoring at first. And as the day progresses, let's move to 8 a.m., so four hours later, still light southeast wind. Let's move to 12, which is seven hours into our passage. By then, we should be out of the Gulf Stream, and we will be pushed north of our destination. What we'll need to do now is motor or sail, if possible, down to West End. Another fun thing about this app, Windy, is you can also check wave heights. Midway through our passage, the wave height is about three feet at a period of 10 seconds. So very calm seas and calm winds for our passage. Another resource that we've been using is Chris Parker. So Chris Parker is a very well-known marine weather reporter and he has a subscription-based service. You can subscribe to his weather forecast and you can also get custom emails, pretty much anything. So. He has confirmed everything that we've been looking at. He's given us some great advice. I would highly recommend him. We don't have the picture perfect light south wind leading up to our crossing a couple days in advance, but we do have light wind and it's not coming from the north. The light wind coming from the south, all those factors play into uh, small waves. We are still new to all of this, so we tried to pick a weather window where the wind was very light possibly too light to sail the whole way, which obviously makes for pretty nice wave conditions most of the time. Our plan is to motor and motor sail the whole way. Our strategy for crossing the Gulf Stream is to head dead east. We're gonna head dead east against the stream knowing full well that we'll be pushed north of our destination, but we're doing this so we can get across the stream as quickly as possible. And when we're out, we will head southeast to our destination out of the Gulf Stream. Good morning. It is currently 3.25 a.m. And we're getting ready to go. The goal is to be leaving the anchorage no later than 4 a.m. So come along. We should be pulling up anchor soon. Stripping it. Okay. 
go into night mode, protect the eyes. Anchor up. Bye <laughs> bye, West Palm Beach. This fun while it lasted. around in a little bit and gives us a chance to sail. land we're about five miles out from West End Old Bahama Bay Marina that's where we're checking in so we are going to put up our quarantine flag Clip done Whoa. nice look at that and then you just clean it If you are planning to enter Bahamas in Old Bahama Bay, you'll be happy to hear that this is one of the easiest entrances ever. All you have to do is line yourself up and come straight in. We have a six foot four draft and all throughout there was plenty of water under the keel. When you enter the cut, carry on straight past the first residential canal onto the marina and customs office. We successfully made it and checked in to West End Bahamas. Let's talk immigration. So I'm not sure about other nationalities, but if you are American or Canadian, you do not have to check out of the United States when you're leaving. We're Canadian, so we just left. Immigration coming into the Bahamas is super simple. Before you come to Bahamas, you're going to want to get your cruising permit it's all done online in advance. We did a three-month cruising permit 
which cost us $300. A friend sent over a super helpful resource that walks you through in great detail every step of completing the click to clear cruising permit website. So I'll link that down below. I would definitely check that out if you are doing this immigration process. Once you finish your click to clear, make sure you note down your rotation number. It starts with PCR and then has a number. When you get to Bahamas and you go to check in, you'll take your passports, that rotation number, and then some additional boat documents because in the office you'll fill out a couple paper forms just about your boat. And that's it. It's super easy. The cruising permit does come with a fishing permit as well. Good luck. All right, guys, we're in West End and there's some crazy weather coming. Stay tuned for episode 8 as we wait out some nasty weather and venture deeper into the Bahamas.